In this demonstration, we will introduce a new ABAP runtime analysis tool, the Transaction SAT. We focus on the NetWeaver Release 7 Enhancement Package 2. For those of you who are already familiar with the Transaction SA30, the Transaction SAT is the successor of the SA30, which was completely reworked by research and development and now offers more benefits. Like modern state-of-the-art UI, additional new tools, easy navigation between them, and so on. We will explain the basics of the SAT and then show you how the tools of the SAT help you to execute effective trace and performance analysis of any ABAP application. We start the transaction SAT. On the initial screen there are two tabs, Measure and Evaluate. For Measure, we specify the description, which application we want to measure, and in the variant, the conditions and the restrictions of, of the measurement. Use aggregation by call for performance measurements to produce only one trace entry for all similar trace calls and no aggregation for trace measurements to produce ABAP trace and follow the flow logic of your ABAP application. On the Statements tab, select the statements which should be measured processing blocks, operations on internal tables, database accesses, and so on. On the Program tab, restrict the measurement to certain program parts. In Evaluate, take a look at measurements results with their status, date of creation, and so on. By default, your user is displayed but you can also display measurements of other users by using this filter button. SAT writes all measurements to the database so that you benefit from central trace containers which can be accessed from all servers of the system. If you double-click this measurement to display it, it will be formatted and written to the database. The display of the SAT is visually close to the new ABAP debugger. You have different tools that you can use for evaluating the runtime analysis results and which can also communicate with each other. Use the Times tool to display more specific time measurement values for the single events of the call hierarchy. And Database Display to identify time-consuming database statements. For the trace analysis, Use call hierarchy and processing block tools. And for the performance analysis, use profile tool and head list. There is detailed application support for using SAT and its tools. Just take a look at this at your leisure. Now we want to execute ABAP trace. We are in the ABAP editor and want to execute this program. Unfortunately, the status bar tells us that the program XXXX doesn't exist. We want to find out the exact source client of this message by using SAT. We want to measure the transaction SE38 and we specify the new variant, message variant. Since we want to produce ABAP trace and measure the flow logic, we don't use aggregation, but we will measure the memory consumption to take a look at the memory hotspots in the measurement. We don't know the application, and so we leave the statements by default and don't restrict to program parts either. We save the variant and start the measurement. We try to execute the program XXX and go back. In the measurement display, we go to the call hierarchy. Call hierarchy displays the measurements events the way they were called by the program. We search for the message
and show the result in the call hierarchy. We can also take a look at message statement in the call stack display. You see the message was displayed in the form check directory. Double click on the statement will lead us to the exact source code line where the message is displayed. If we scroll to the top, we will see that we are indeed in the form check directory. Now we will show the message statement in the Processing Blocks tool. In the Processing Blocks tool, you get the call graph of all modules, functions, methods, screens, and so on, which you set up in your variant. Now we want to display the critical processing blocks in terms of runtime. We want to see which processing blocks exceed 30% of the total runtime. And the critical blocks get marked in red. We can restrict the view to this sub-area to analyze it more deeply. We have also measured the memory consumption and can display it now. The memory consumption will be displayed in the beginning and in the end of the processing block. In this way, you can find performance and memory hotspots in the above application with SAT. Now we want to trace a parallel process. We are in the process overview in the transaction SM50. We have a background job which has been running since a long time and reading the data from the database table as flight. We want to analyze what this job is doing and we can do it by using the SAT. You must ensure that SAT runs on the same server as a batch job. We go to SAT and press the switch button for the parallel session. And we see the same overview of running processes as in the SM50. We select the batch process with the cursor and we turn on the trace for a short time, refresh and turn off it again. If we now take a look at the call hierarchy, we will see again and again repeating statements. Perform A, perform B, open cursor as flight, fetch as flight. It looks like an endless loop. And if we go to the source code, we will see this while loop. While i not equals 1, perform a. And form a calls form b. And form b selects data from the table as flight. But i is never set and therefore the while loop will never end. So in a couple of minutes we were able to analyze a long running process by switching on and off the ABAP trace in the SAT for this particular process. Now we see in the runtime errors overview of the transaction ST22 that the user ABCDE has produced the runtime error Gen program not exists. With double clicking on this runtime error we see that it was try to generate a program with the name drag and drop plus 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 and so on and this program doesn't exist. But unfortunately there is no source code extract in the dump and therefore it's not possible to find out who generates the program. 
Now we will show you how to find out it by using the user trace in the SAT. In the SAT we press schedule button to schedule a new measurement. SAT offers the possibility to schedule the trace for a particular user on the current server. We can specify here user, client, external mode, process category, object type and name. We want to trace any action of the user ABCDE and therefore we don't specify any additional parameters and we want to produce three measurements. Now the user ABCDE executes a background job which leads to the runtime error. And we see in our measurement that it has started. We stop it, go to the Evaluate tab, and we see that this measurement contains runtime error. We display the measurement, go to the call hierarchy and we scroll to the end of the call hierarchy where the table snapped for the dump is filled. We open the Processing Blocks tool and we see the call graph of our generate method and we can display it in the source code and find out who generates the program drag and drop plus plus plus. Now we show how to execute and analyze performance measurements with SAT. We are in the above workbench and try to expand all the nodes of the basis package and see that it takes some time. We analyze the performance of this action with the transaction SAT. In the SAT we have to specify a new variant, performance variant, and since we want to measure performance we have to use aggregation. On the statements tab we choose additionally operations on internal tables. Save the variant and we want to see the names of the internal tables in the measurement and we measure the transaction S80. Execute, open the nodes and collapse them again. Let's take a look at measurements results in the Profile tool. The Profile tool offers aggregated view on the performance measurements. We can check out which operations or which program, software package or application component need most of the execution time. This trace result view looks pretty technical here. That is why we can use this button and choose Components view. The benefit of the Profile tool is that you can start with the component FI or HR and drill down through the packages and program views to find top performance consumers. We expand packages and choose the top consumer SEU package, expand its programs, function groups, position on the SEWB control and take a look at its trace results. We see that internal tables consume the most of the runtime here. Expand it. Now read and accesses. And we see now the top consumer loop add. And we can display this sub area in the hit list tool.
The cross time in the hit list tool is the time between the start of the method and the end. The net run time is the gross run time minus all other events that this method has called. The hit list is sorted by the net run time. That is the run time we are interested in. And we click on the top performance consumer on the top and can see it in the source code. It is a loop over the table L object list. And we see it is a nested loop, loop in loop. And it could be expensive in terms of runtime. So we use the combination of the profile tool and hit list tool to find one of the performance button X and expanding of the package nodes in the above workbench. Now we will show how to restrict the performance measurements, especially for long running programs, by using SAT. We are in the above editor and we see that the execution of this report takes a long time. We go to the transaction SAT and we create a new variant for the performance measurement. We will use aggregation and we will execute two measurements and in a first run we will measure all the processing blocks, subroutine, function modules, events and methods. Save the variant and go back. We will execute the measurement for the above editor, run our report, and take a look at the measurement result on the hit list tool. On the hit list we see that these two calls of the class LCL test consume the most of runtime. And now in the second run we will restrict the measurement of one of this method. We will choose the method test2. And we have to change our performance variant. Now in a second run we will measure all the statements, but we will restrict the measurement to this top consumer, the method test2 of the class LCL test. Save the variant, go back and execute the measurement for the second time. Go back and now we see pretty short hit list and on the top we see our performance consumer. This read on the internal table I tab. So, this was a demonstration about the benefits of the SAT, the new ABAP runtime analysis tool. You have seen a modern and flexible UI, which allows easy navigation between different tools, and you have also seen the new tools of SAT. If you want to execute the trace analysis, to measure the flow logic of your ABAP application, just use call hierarchy and processing block tools. Try out a new profile tool in combination with the hit list tool for performance analysis to follow the performance distribution from the application component down to the execution times of particular program, package or database operation. Thank you for your attention.